My name is Jonathan Atkins. I'm the owner of Tick Performance here in Mount Airy. Uh, today we're going to go over the installation of a Tick adjustable master cylinder on a fourth generation F body. So we're opening up the master cylinder kit and included you'll find three zip ties, uh, the rod assembly, and then the master cylinder assembly itself comes pre-assembled with the line. It's clocked in the correct orientation as it should be installed on the car as well as the cap here for the, the line to the reservoir. And of course the installation instructions. The benefits of the master cylinder, uh, the tick master compared to the factory master cylinder is the bore size has been increased from three quarter inch to seven eighths of an inch. Uh, with each master having roughly the same amount of stroke, uh, the Tick Master having a larger bore and an adjustable rod, which the adjustable rod is effectively adjusting the stroke, so it allows you to tailor in the perfect amount of fluid flow for the clutch to disengage properly without being over disengaged. Okay, so to install the master cylinder, we'll go inside the car first and take the interior panels underneath the dash down and gain access to the bolts that hold it in place. Uh, there's actually two nuts that hold the factory master in place to a new bolt. So we'll pull that out first, get the factory master out. And as you can see, this car has no engine. It's a project car that we're gonna be working on here at Tick and doing some racing with. Uh, that'll allow you to see better how the master goes in and, and clocks and, and the procedure to get it in place. So we'll start by taking the interior apart. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the panels that would be here, this panel. And then normally there's another panel here that would conceal these wires, you know, just kind of uh, cover the, the factory wire and it's not here. Uh, so that's one thing you're not going to see exactly, but it would just be held in place with these two screw holes. It would combine this with that piece. And, uh, that's all there is to that. So we're going to pull these two screws out. And there is a plug in here that we'll have to disconnect if it is connected. we can see the master cylinder, the original master cylinder is here. These two nuts hold it in place. This is actually a, a big U-bolt that clamps the factory master to the firewall. So we'll pull those two nuts. So we had some trouble with the audio uh, during the install of the master, so we're going to be dubbing over some of that video content to explain uh, what was actually going on. But we were removing the factory master cylinder and we made note to uh, remove a clip that would be behind the pedal bracket assembly uh, under one of the, or on the U-bolt assembly that holds the master in place. It was used probably from the manufacturer to just kind of help hold things in place during assembly until the pedal assembly did bolt into place over top of it. Uh, made note that the clip on the end of the master cylinder's rod uh, you know, how to remove that, showed how it was designed or intended to, to work, to, to pry the tab back a bit to pull it out. And then we're just attempting to remove the master cylinder itself through the firewall. Uh, we end up going back into the engine bay to get a better uh, position of that, to, to, to remove that U-bolt, which has to be pulled through the firewall squarely, otherwise it'll tend to hang up on the, the bolt holes. Here we're just out in the engine bay, removing that U-bolt. Uh, we're making note of the large wiring harness here uh, that runs along the bottom of the strut tower. It turns around the, the strut tower and it kind of uh, interferes with removing the master cylinder itself. And Sometimes you can kind of pull it up or back just a bit just to, to gain a little better access to the master cylinder itself. Uh, here I was just showing that you know, you can see the line is, is still attached to the factory uh, slave assembly, which this was an LT1 equipped car, so the, the hydraulics is a bit different, but the master itself is the same. And when we go back together with this car, we'll be using an LS style slave anyway. So for the rest of the install, you'll see that we use the LS hose with the quick disconnect fitting, which is how we will be using it in this car later on. Right here we're removing the reservoir, 
uh, there's just one plastic retaining clip that holds it into place. The other end of the reservoir is slipped into a slot of the factory bracket. So once you pull that one plastic clip out, the reservoir will slide free. And we're gonna leave the reservoir with the fluid still in it, the hose still attached to the master. And you can feed the reservoir down between the strut tower and the brake booster. Uh, you just have to find the, the correct angle to allow it to slide through there, but uh, it, it will go and that way you don't have to lose any fluid or make any kind of mess. So now we're, we're removing the master cylinder from the car entirely. Uh, and it's just negotiating the reservoir and hose around the steering shaft. And then everything is, at this point, it's free of the car and uh, we're ready to start installing the new master. Here we're just comparing the attachment method or the method to fasten the master to the firewall. Uh, the tick master uses bolts, two bolts as opposed to that U-bolt which makes it a little easier to work with. Yeah, the master cylinder comes pre-assembled to a degree. The, the hose is already attached and tightened down at the correct angle or orientation to fit the chassis. So you don't need to tighten the line or the blue fitting or try to manipulate it or turn it to any different position. It's correct as it comes. The white cap that your hose to your reservoir attaches to is also clocked in the best position to clear the brake booster. Here we're taking the reservoir with the hose off of the factory master, which we will be reusing. So we removed it over a pan so that we didn't make a mess. And of course, we're going to clean the reservoir and the hose and prep it for reinstall. So we're just using brake cleaner to, to clean out any gunk. Uh, we made note or notice during the install that someone had already put a master cylinder in this car at some point in its life, just a, a factory replacement. Uh, so the reservoir is actually fairly clean the, the way we found it, but we're removing any dirt or buildup, you know, that gets inside or outside for that matter, just so everything is clean. And we'll blow it out and then reinstall it onto the new master. So we're gonna reattach the factory hose uh, and reservoir to the new master outside of the car here. Here we, we use one of the supplied zip ties as a clamp, essentially just to cinch that hose to the, to the master. Uh, there's no clamp or zip tie on the factory assembly, but this is just something to you know, help ensure that you don't accidentally pull it off when you're working on the car. So here we're ready to put it back in the car, and you notice that the rod assembly and the time joint is not installed at this point. Uh, it's easier to just leave that off for now once you get the master in place through the hole in the firewall, then you can go back inside and, and start the bolts. And then once, that, once the bolts are started, then you can install the rod itself. So we're feeding the reservoir back between the strut tower and the brake booster uh, to put it back into its location here. Again, I'm using both hands around the brake booster to guide it into place. Here we're just negotiating the the wiring harness that's in, in the way a bit, and of course we need to get the, the hose underneath the steering shaft. So now the master's in place as far as the engine bay side is concerned. Uh, we're gonna twist it around, kind of get it lined up. I'm still negotiating that harness and the, the plastic guide. You can see I, I pulled that plastic guide back to gain us some clearance, and now the master cylinder is where it should be. Now the line itself, if the car had the engine and the headers, transmission and everything in place, you would need to zip tie the line back to that heat shield or you could even run it underneath the heat shield uh, to ensure that it doesn't ever get over onto the headers. Uh, but you just need to make sure it has adequate clearance between the exhaust so that it doesn't get burnt or damaged. Now we're back inside the car here. We've got the bolts installed through the firewall. Everything is tightened down, so we're gonna install the, the rod. And it's important to, to note when you install the rod that the rod is threaded onto the master cylinder itself, uh, the same amount of threads as the heim joint is threaded into the other end. So we're gonna thread the rod completely down uh, as far as it goes onto the master cylinder's rod 
hex portion onto the master cylinder's rod and then we will attach it to the pedal and adjust the pedal up from that point making sure that the rod coming out of the master doesn't turn uh, because it can spin freely so you would hold the threaded rod while you turn the hex portion uh, to keep adjustment even on both ends of the hex portion of the rod. Yeah, there's a jam nut on both ends. Once you make your final adjustment, you know, you would lock the, the jam nuts down, but for now, uh, jam nuts can stay loose. We're adjusting here. Uh, to basically bring the pedal up, once we get everything hooked up, we're gonna bring the pedal up fairly high for the bleeding process. And then once you actually hook the line to the slave and you're ready to start driving or testing the clutch disengagement, you would want to adjust the pedal back down more to the middle or lower range of its travel and then slowly adjust your way back out. Uh, but like I said, for bleeding purposes, we want to utilize as much of the stroke as the master offers, so we're going to adjust the pedal to near the top of its travel for right now, and we're going to show you how to bleed with just the master you know, itself, not attached to the slave yet. After the bleeding process, it's vital to adjust your rod back to the shortest length. This is where your pedal is closest to the floor. If your rod is too long, it will damage the clutch. You must start with the rod at its lowest adjustment, then slowly adjust outward, bringing the pedal up closer to the driver. See the instructions for final adjustment. I would say it's the preferred way because you can uh, go ahead and isolate just the one component, which is the master itself. We use this cheaper fluid because Tilton, the manufacturer of the cylinder itself on our kit, they recommend that we use this as opposed to some of the uh, performance oriented fluids that have a higher boiling point uh, or like a DOT5 fluid uh, because they say that this particular fluid has better lubricating properties. Um, basically what that means is uh, this is going to offer better protection for the cylinder wall of the master cylinder or the piston would potentially uh, scuff or cause damage so this fluid lubricates the piston better. We're going to carefully pour the fluid in. You can hear some, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but some air is bubbling out as it is, you know, just fluid is settling in place of the cylinder. Um, so you may have to top it off a time or two. But someone is going to go inside the car and push the pedal as I go under the car and push the piston of the quick disconnect in. So basically the quick disconnect keeps fluid from leaking out of the system when it's disconnected. It has a plunger or a piston that would stop the, the orifice. So by taking a small screwdriver we're going to push that plunger in and allow a path for air and, and then fluid to escape the end of the master's line. Which, by bleeding it this way it's going to be much quicker than if you just hooked the line up to the slave if this car had everything installed. If you just plug it up, then you're going to have an entire system full of air that has to work its way all the way through the slave. All right, so we've got the end of our line here. You can see there's a piston or a plunger here which can be pushed in easily. You see I'm pushing it in and out right here. Uh, now this is the connection of an LS style or a C5 or you know, a lot of other applications. Um, so bleeding the master this way makes for a lot easier process. So I'm gonna push the, the piston in and hold it. And now Jesse's gonna push the pedal to the floor. Yeah, go ahead slowly. Once you get it pressed down, just hold it. Okay, so we got nothing out. We're going to let go of the plunger, the piston or the plunger here, and now Jesse's going to let the pedal return to the top. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So you can see we're getting a little fluid out now. Okay, now back up. Are you up? One more time. <laughs> okay, go ahead and let it up. Okay, I'm going to push the piston in now. 
So go ahead and push the pedal to the floor and hold it. Okay, let it back up. Now, does the pedal feel any differently? Okay, I'm gonna try something. We're just gonna by hand push it and you'll notice that the pedal will start to have a little pressure. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna pump, pump the pedal just to the point where we feel that it feels like there may be some pressure starting to happen. So we're gonna just pump the, the soft or the spongy area. A lot of times, if you do this, what little bit of air is left will work its way out. And you'll notice the pedal is gradually, the, the free play is gradually getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Now we can't put a lot of pressure on it because that valve at the end of the line is closed. So now we're, we're all the way up, we're bled. The master would be completely bled at this point. And if we push the pedal really hard, we may bust the line or bend the rod or something along that, those lines. So that's why I'm just barely pushing it with my hand. And you can see the master is fully bled. Yeah, as, as we're doing that, what it's doing is it's working the last of what little bit of air would have been in the system. They will be bubbling out the reservoir. So even as we're doing that, even though fluid's not going out onto the, the into our pan, because that air is coming out, the fluid level could be going down. So you still want to check and make sure that your reservoir stays you know, full, or at least fluid that you can see. Leveled our fluid up to about halfway in the reservoir. And then when we put our cap back in, there's this black rubber piece. This piece here, we're gonna drop it in. This kind of acts as the seal for the cap. So if you fill your reservoir up, then when you put this in, it's gonna displace enough fluid that it's gonna overflow and you know pour out everywhere under your into your engine bay. So you don't want to fill the reservoir much more than about half so that when you put this in, the level will rise up to the full position. We'll clean this guy off a little bit. And as far as the master cylinder is con concerned, our install is done. Now, if you plugged it up to your slave cylinder and your slave cylinder was the same slave cylinder you've been running, it would already have fluid in it. So you would technically be finished unless you wanted to go ahead and kind of flush the fluid in that slave out, which then you could continue the bleeding process through the bleeder of the slave cylinder itself. Yeah, so uh, we've finished the install of the master here today. Uh, the car obviously does not have transmission, slave, engine, and the other parts needed to finish the bleeding and install process. So we'll follow up this video with another video in the coming weeks that will showcase uh, bleeding through the slave and the proper way to adjust with the engine running, rev test, and other things.